to news this morning. Good morning. The time is 6.34. I'm Madison Pergram. And I'm Will Puckett on this Monday, September the 30th. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. It's definitely a Monday. Yeah, it feels we, like a Monday. <laughs> it feels like a Monday. We're talking like it's a Monday. It's just, it's, it's a Monday. Monday. Yeah. Well, let's go to Kelly McShane. Kelly, do you have any good news for us besides it's a Monday? Lower um, temperatures? Let's, let's try and think. Um, let's see. We're going to see record-breaking temperatures. and But we do have a little bit of a cool down on the way. So we're going to get through a little bit of heat, but I promise you we're going to see some relief from those temperatures. However, not yet. Temperature is very warm to start this morning. 60s and 70s across the board. Overall, that's what we're looking at heading into this morning. It may feel a little bit muggy out there as well. Over into Whitesburg, not too much fog over the downtown area, but a little bit of fog settling into the Cumberland Valley. You can see that here on our visibility map. Looks very patchy this morning, but overall just take it easy if you are traveling throughout the south this morning. But overall, temperatures the big story heading throughout the week. I will let you know those temperatures heading into the next several days here in just a little bit. Alrighty, Kelly, thank you. Well, dispatchers say the Hal Rogers Parkway shut down for close to one hour yesterday after a crash. Officials say both lanes of the parkway were shut down near exit 56. They got the call just before 1130 Sunday morning of a crash involving a motorcycle in another vehicle. The driver of the motorcycle was flown out and two other people involved refused treatment at the scene. Officials have not released the, per the identity of the motorcyclist. And last night we learned that two inmates escaped from the Kentucky River Regional Jail in Perry County. The inmates are identified as Carl Engel and John Miller. Officials from the jail say the inmates overpowered a deputy, stole a set of keys, and escaped. There is no word on their whereabouts or if the inmates are considered dangerous. This is a developing story and we'll have more updates as they become available on WYMT.com. Well, Gallia County deputies are searching the last of four are searching for the last of four inmates. They escaped from the jail just after midnight Sunday morning. Those inmates are Bryn Martin, who escaped the jail previously on September 3rd, Christopher Clement, Troy McDaniel and Lawrence Lee the third. Three were caught early this morning in Cary, North Carolina, and one is still at large. Tori Yorgi was in Gallia and spoke with community members who say waking up to the news of an escape was not unfamiliar. Tracy Pethel says waking up to inmates escaping from the Gallia County Jail was unfortunately not surprising. It was just, it's just sad. It's just very sad that, you know, this is a continuing thing. It's just not a good thing to wake up to. Gallia Sheriff's Office says four inmates escaped from the jail early Sunday morning, making this the third inmate escape from Gallia County Jail in just under two months. It's disappointing at times. It's disappointing, especially when you're, they're supposed to be in jail and they can get out like they can. You know, I think that needs to be further investigated. And I thought, oh my gosh, not, not again. How many escapes do we have to have? We've had numerous. And they aren't the only community members who are voicing concerns about the jail. It makes you nervous. I mean, you know, when people do bad and they're out in the community, they'll do anything. The sheriff says the inmates used a homemade weapon against two women correctional officers guarding the jail. And now the community is on edge again. My next thought went to the community. Um, you know, it's very scary if you have everybody was posting, you know, oh, we're locking our doors. You know, are they breaking into people's houses? Are they stealing cars? Are they, you know, what, what are they doing? And it's, it's a huge safety concern for the area. You know, and it's kind of scary too, because you just never know when someone's desperate, you know, what they're capable of doing. Feeling unsettled after three separate breakouts from behind bars. Tori Yorkey, WSAZ, News Channel 3, Gallia County. Again, three of the men are now back in custody. Lawrence Lee is still on the run. Well, we may soon know more about a murder that happened earlier this year in Perry County. Police arrested James McIntosh in February of this year, saying he shot the victim, Danny Mullins of Chavez, several times before throwing the gun in a nearby river. McIntosh later pleaded not guilty to charges of murder and tampering with physical evidence. McIntosh is due back in court today. One Ashland woman is under arrest after intending to shoot her husband during a domestic dispute on Friday. Julie Crawford is charged with attempted murder after she pulled a shotgun on her husband, Thomas Crawford, during a heated argument on Friday morning. 
A witness stepped in and wrestled the shotgun away from Crawford before any shots could be fired. Crawford is charged with felony attempted murder, domestic violence, and is being held at the Boyd County Detention Center. No one was injured in the incident. And officials from the Laurel County Sheriff's Department responded to a complaint Sunday morning of a woman screaming for help at a house behind a business about seven miles south of London. When police arrived, they were unable to find a woman, but instead found a man who appeared to be under the influence of alcohol. Police discovered Rick, Ricky North had two outstanding warrants. Police say North briefly fought with police before being taken into custody. He was charged with disorderly conduct, menacing, and resisting arrest as well as other domestic violence charges. Officials are still looking for the person who broke into a Laurel County home Saturday morning. Police say the homeowner found the man making mayo, yes, mayonnaise sandwiches in his kitchen. The suspect left the house but left behind his wallet and ID. Officials are glad no one was hurt during the incident. All kinds of things could have happened because most most homeowners anymore in, in the times that we live in, they're armed and they have weapons in their house. And if you didn't know somebody and, and somebody broke in on you, you know, you know who, who knows what's going to go through your mind at that time. Officials with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office are not releasing the identity of the suspect until they are able to obtain an arrest warrant. And police arrested a man after they say he attacked a deputy on Saturday. Officials from the Laurel County Sheriff's Office say John Shell of Colorado was arrested for driving under the influence. While being transported, police had to stop the car to reposition his handcuffs, where Shell then tried to run down the interstate. Once they caught up with Shell, police say he struck two deputies. He was then taken back into custody to the Laurel County Detention Center and is facing multiple charges. People in Meade County honored one of their own yesterday, an officer who died last week while trying to arrest a suspect. Detective Chris Holsey suffered a medical emergency while arresting a suspect in Painesville last weekend. He was 46 years old. At the time of his death, he was a full-time paramedic and a volunteer sheriff's deputy. The man Holsey was trying to arrest when he had the medical emergency was Terry Gunterman. He is being charged with manslaughter, trafficking, assault, and possession of drug paraphernalia. As we start off your Monday and head out the door this morning, those temperatures going to be a little bit on the warm side. We're seeing those upper 60s to lower 70s, 73 now in Prestonsburg, Pikeville at 71, as well as Jackson. Ashland a little bit cooler, 64 this morning, Moorhead at 68. Heading down to Middlesbrough, we are at 67 degrees down there. Now temperatures or visibility is a little bit reduced throughout the Cumberland Valley region and towards the south, but overall it's just some patchy fog this morning, but still be very careful if you are traveling along into the Cumberland Valley region, especially towards the Tennessee border. Now be sure to download the WYMT weather app because we do have a few stray rain chances today, much like what we saw yesterday. But overall, we're just going to be seeing the sunshine this morning. Heading into the afternoon, about lunchtime temperatures going to be in those mid to upper 80s. And then into the afternoon hours, temperatures soar into the low to mid 90s. And I'll have more details on the temperatures we will see the rest of the week here in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, for people with diabetes, insulin is a vital life-saving drug, and the price is skyrocketing to the point where many are unable to afford it. We'll have more details. <laughs> 